So you're only prepped by only, but not really. <laughs> Anybody can do that. circuit perfect day for it the funny thing with Anglesey is it's on its own little outcrop of an island um, and it's either incredibly windy and rainy or beautiful and sunny and today for my fourth track day here it is incredibly beautiful and sunny and not only that are we surrounded by great weather we are surrounded by some of the highest caliber super and hyper cars that I could wish to accompany on track and that's what today is all about it's the first time that I've taken the 458 speciali on circuit this circuit I actually came to uh, in my first speciali which I had about 18 months ago but it was November it was like minus four and just all around a bit of a dicey experience today we're like 28 degrees tarmac temperatures hot we've got sticky tires it is perfect so let's go check out what's in the pits and then let's jump on track with some of this other serious metal and find out what this car is all about the caliber of cars here truly truly next level stuff the weird thing about track days is from an entertaining point of view they're actually quite hard to film because let's face it you go around and around in circles or exactly the same piece of tarmac all day so for me it's more about the people the cars and uh, the really special stuff. So we actually have an Aston Martin Vulcan here, which uh, Ollie Webb is driving today. Hopefully we're gonna get a uh, spin in that later, but at the very worst, we'll chat to Ollie about the experience of driving one of those things. Because let's face it, it's not every day you get to even see a Vulcan, but to be able to speak with someone to help describe what it's like, and then maybe even jump in it and take you guys along for the experience would really tick all the boxes. <laughs> Do you know what? The first time I encountered one of these cars was when you were instructing me in the GT3 and they were developing the tyres for it at Silverstone. Right. Do you remember it blasted past? That was it, yeah. And we were like, in what world does that happen? Yeah, that was And funny. now you're driving one. Yes. <laughs> it's so cool. Should we listen to it then? Yeah, let's listen to it. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs>
You're not trying. That was amazing. You're not trying unless you slide. <laughs> Yes, mate. That <laughs> was the business, man. We need to chat about this car. I, I want to know all about it. We can have a... Yeah. Yes, mate. <laughs> so Ollie's just taken me out in the Vulcan. Um, I've got to put your brains on that, man. I never thought I'd go out in one. Neither did I. Well, I, we were having a chat earlier on that the last time you were doing some instructing with me on track, uh, there was a Vulcan there testing, and we were trying yeah. to chase it down in the GT3, and it was just gone. Yeah. And we were both losing our minds over it. I and remember your confirmation video of your yeah, hands like, like that. What? Oh, yeah, and now right. here we are, 12 months on, and you're driving one. Yeah. And I'm in your passenger seat. Yeah. I want to know all about it. Down I, want, as well. I, I want to know all about it. Tell me, what's it feel like? Oh, it, unbelievable. I mean, we're just on the Prelly Sport Cup 2s, which are great tyres, yeah. um, but it's um, it's just on its road tyres. But it's super mature as a car. It's not for sale, so any YouTubers Is it for sale? who want to buy one, I'm sure it's cheap. I've not asked, but I'm sure it's cheap. <laughs> what, what were they at factory by? They're like two and a half million. Right? Yeah, I think they must be like six now. So there's like seven in the world? I think so. And that's yeah. the only one for sale at the moment. So, okay, so um, yeah, so basically we had it down at Dunsfold recently. I did a few laps um, with some private clients, and then I just, Tommy said, right, being locked up, we're never using it again. Club was like, hey, do you want to come to Anglesey? <laughs> like, yeah, bring, bring them on one as well, I'm coming. Amazing. Not many people are going to even see these things. Never yeah. mind it. I mean, I've experienced it as a passenger. Massive bucket list and tick. But you're experiencing it as a driver. You're also a serious driver yourself. So I want to use as many descriptive words as you can. Because <laughs> like, my thing is all about taking people along for the journey. Like, yeah. Immersing them in what it's like. There's only so much of that I can explain yeah. as, a, as a passenger. Well, I, you'll hear it when you're in there in this video. But the, the, the insaneness and rawness of it compared to... For instance, we were following the 918 at one point, and that's a complete opposite of what this does. The 918 does it effortlessly, it's an amazing car, we'll do a very similar time to the Vulcan. It squeals, it roars, it blips, it shakes you. I mean, you might even have noticed on the brakes, the thing just throws your head against the front of the windscreen. And it cannot idle, it cannot do anything slowly. So it is only built to go around tracks like Portimao, Spa, Silverstone. It's a fast track. Fast track. This is fast track. Yeah, this isn't the track for it, but it's because in the long corners, in the long slow corners, you're waiting, waiting, waiting. But obviously, you turned to see Yeah, we had a good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to have a bit of fun. I thought. I thought to myself, I've never seen other than Abu Dhabi the, the Vulcan drifting. So thought I was going to try. It's pretty good at it. It's, it's not right. too bad. Not bad. Is it funny though? I mean, I assume with it being tracked by, it's got quite a quick rack, short quick rack. Exactly. So yeah. It goes. There's not much to catch it. With. Exactly. So it bites, and then yeah. it will grip again because it's meant. It's designed to be planted. Yeah. So it's not. Once you get it going, it's got enough power to keep it going and going. So sure. pullaways with TC off. Yeah. And smoke its yeah, days. Well, I saw you earlier, but yeah. yeah. Like the length of the pit. Oh, it'll just keep going if it wants to. Yeah. You can. See <laughs> and when it, it lets go because it's got quite a long wheelbase. Yeah. Progressive or snappy? Snappy. I'd say if you if you get a nice progressive second or third gear and hold the throttle, it will just be okay. really progressive. Yeah. If you go in first and you want to get a big yeah. like, Whoa, then it'll snap and come back. So it is, it is tough. Right. Not as easy as the 488 and some of the no. others. No, sure. So circuits like this, you mentioned it's not really the right circuit. No. On the right circuit, can you, is it a downforce car? I mean, yes. it's got a massive weight. Yeah, 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 and a lot of ground effects. So once yeah. you've got the slicks on, that is genuinely GT3 proper race. Not even GT3, but GT3. I remember, I remember, we came out of the pits in my GT3 at Silverstone on warm tyres, because we just been out. They came out and we followed it on cold tyres. And I mean, you were on it. Like, you were absolutely on it. I said, Look, man, I know it's my road car, but hit this like it's a race car. And you were absolutely on it, and that thing was gone in three corners. Yeah. It was just gone. And, yeah. and that for me really highlighted the difference between, like, what is a thoroughbred race car and exactly. just a fast road car. Yeah, yeah, really. it is. But it's unbelievable because to have it so thoroughbred race car, but still inside look spaceshipy and have yeah. a couple of comforts in yeah. there. Oh, yeah, that sounds absolutely like it. Dude, it's the best, one of the best sounding cars. What I love about it is that Aston Martin has the balls to make it. Yes. You know? I mean, oh, it's yeah. the most unnecessary thing. Yeah. Well, they made it, and I think as a Halo product for the brand, it's, it's immense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, as much as I love track days for obviously indulging in the track action, this, particularly on supercar days with supercar driver, this is the moment. This is when things really, really get special. In front of me is two Koenigseggs, a 1-1. <laughs> There's an Aston Martin Volvo.
Vulcan as well, which I've just been out in. The caliber of cars that are surrounding me right now is absolutely out of this world. The people are great, the sun is out. Let me indulge you in some of this. Just a quick chat about this car. I mean, it's, this seems to happen when I get a new car, but I've been analyzing a lot of car experiences over the last few months. In fact, over the last 12 months, really, I've been really fortunate to get behind the wheel of some incredible cars. But I'm just finding this one just, it covers so many bases, it ticks so many boxes. I mean, you know, I drove here this morning in automatic, comfort mode, I had bumpy road mode on, it was in sport mode, which is basically like normal driving mode. And I was listening to my podcast, taking it easy, fuel economy was not bad. And then we turn up at the track, put it into CT off, suspension in stiff, and it becomes like this raging track weapon. I mean, it's just, it's so playful. It dances, it sounds amazing, it looks great. You know, these tires, it's, I don't know, it's got really even wear, even though it's been playing around and drifting about a bit. I mean, Ollie Webb has been behind the wheel. He's been driving it nine tenths for a good four or five laps while we were chasing a 918 Spider, which in itself, I was shocked at how well this did keeping up with that car. And in the 918, there was a professional 
racing driver. Now, there was a professional racing driver in this car too, but I'm always blown away when I see the capability of my own car. Um, this, yeah, this one's Im immense. It's such a shame that Ferrari aren't gonna be making, at least as far as we're aware, any more naturally aspirated rear engine V8s. I don't know whether they'll do it with V12s in future or, I don't know, but it just ticks so many boxes. My on-track experience has blown me away. I remember, if you're an early subscriber to this channel, one of the things that annoyed me a bit with my original Speciali was the first time I took it on track. When I got it back on the road, you know, you could get nowhere near that experience. But this time, the exhaust situation, I think, is going to take care of that. Because a good, not a not the only degree, but a good chunk of what you're experiencing on track is that incredible, that revving the engine out to nine and hearing that fantastic noise. But with an exhaust, it's gonna add a whole new character, a whole new light to this car so that I can enjoy it and exploit that engine on the road without having to drive like an idiot. So uh, yeah, very, very cool day. Been out in a Vulcan. I mean, obscene attack on the senses, just phenomenal start to finish. That engine, right now I'm all about naturally aspirated cars. I, I don't know if it's because they're a dying breed or what, but you know, for all of the merits of turbos, they're incredibly fast and efficient, etc. The theater's not there, they don't pull at the heartstrings, they don't give you the goosebumps that, certainly not modern day turbos. There's been an F40 driving around with them, and that's been pretty awesome. Uh, but modern day turbos seem to sanitize the experience a bit. Anyway, incredibly, incredibly special day. I want to say a massive thank you to Supercar Days, a massive thank you to Adam Thorby and Supercar Driver, and uh, yeah, we'll be back soon with some more Speciality Action. As always guys, thanks for watching, see you next time. Ciao!